Listener Lee sent us probably the most hilarious billboard I've ever seen in my life. This segment is brought to you by Eastside Weight Loss Clinic. Some patients like me can lose 20 to 30 pounds in a month or two. Schedule your free 15-minute consultation today at eastsideweightlossclinic.com. Thank you, Listener Lee. This was in Seattle. Sounds like it was on Capitol Hill. It is a billboard for the Seattle Times. It reads... News that holds those in power accountable. Well, that's nice, isn't it? News that holds those in power accountable. The Seattle Times. Subscribe to us. Fascinating, given that they have been doing the exact opposite of holding powerful people accountable. And in fact, they've been giving powerful people a free pass, as we have detailed, over and over and over on the show in the last few weeks. For example, they had this phenomenal reporting, in theory, on the issue at McNeil Island. They had a story Washington could find hundreds for sexual violence, then it quietly began releasing them, and I thought, wow, a great piece of journalism from the Seattle Times, talking about how Bob Ferguson and the Attorney General's office have been releasing all these sexually violent predators quietly behind closed doors, and then he's bragging on the campaign trail that he's actually protecting communities from these very violent sex predators, only to read the entire lengthy article and realize that they didn't mention Bob Ferguson even one time by name. So they, was that, what does the billboard say? Was that holding the powerful accountable? No, it was pointing out something that's happening and then blatantly refusing to hold the very powerful person who's responsible for it and who's lying about on the campaign trail accountable. And not to mention that the Seattle Times editorial board then turned around and endorse Bob Ferguson for governor, despite the fact that they acknowledge he has some serious lapses in transparency, like when his office hid 11,000 pages of documents related to a lawsuit brought about by the estate of a developmentally disabled woman who was abused under state care, and a judge said they willfully withheld evidence in that case. By the way, if a law enforcement officer was found to have willfully withheld evidence, you don't think that Attorney General Bob Ferguson would prosecute him? And despite the fact that A.G. Ferguson also three years ago pushed to decriminalize hard drugs like fentanyl in the middle of a fentanyl crisis, which is creating our homeless crisis and our crime crisis, and the Seattle Times editorial board said, eh, we'll endorse him anyway. Is that, what is it? Is that news that holds those in power accountable? No, it's not. Another example, the Seattle Times editorial board endorsing Chris Reichdahl for superintendent of public instruction, despite the fact that they refused to endorse him before the primary because they said educational outcomes have been that bad and he refuses to take accountability for his failures. He likes to blame other people. Like this week, he had a choice to either blame himself or blame the budget. So of course he blamed the budget. But they still turned around because, oh, God forbid, we can't endorse a conservative for anything. So they endorsed Chris Reichdahl for school's chief, despite the horrible state of our education system under two years of his leadership. Is that, what is it again? News that holds those in power accountable? I don't think so. Let's see. They also recommended, the Seattle Times editorial board recommended keeping Washington's Climate Commitment Act, saying vote no on Initiative 2117. And they did that despite the fact that they know damn well that powerful people have been lying about the Climate Commitment Act, including the most powerful person in the state, Governor Jay Inslee, who repeatedly lied to us about the fact that the CCA would increase gas prices. At what point are you gonna tell the people of Washington state that they're gonna possibly see much higher gas prices next year because of the CO2 emissions tax? Which well, that's not- that's not true. They are not going to see much higher gas prices, maybe even lower than they are today. This is going to have minimal impact, if any, pennies. We're talking about pennies, potentially. Yeah, so the governor gets to lie about it repeatedly over the course of now two years. And the newspaper of record still says, well, he should get to keep the policy that he's spent all this time lying about. Is that... What is the billboard again? Is that news that holds those in power accountable? I don't think so. (laughs) So I'm kind of curious how they came up with that slogan. Well, you know, that's why it's up in Capitol Hill. It should say 
News that tends to be the people that don't care. It should say news that holds those out of power accountable. That might work. News that holds Republicans accountable. <laughs> can we can we crowdfund a billboard, people? We really need to. We, we need should. a billboard. We inquired about billboard costs. You know how freaking expensive it is to put up a billboard? What did, they, what did they, you get quoted? Like 20 grand for yeah. a, a run in a, in a good location. Because what's the point location. in mm-hmm. paying for a billboard in a location that nobody's going to see? So we were like, oh, it's election year. We should buy a billboard. And then Nicole was like reaching out to some people who have been like, had, had done a billboard, I think, after Dory passed away. Mm-hmm. And like, like people who are down for the cause, right? Still like $20,000. They gave us some really options funny. where we could do it a little, a little cheaper. Um, but that's a lot of money. I don't think we need... I don't think a billboard on Capitol Hill would cost $20,000. Mm-hmm. But I want a billboard right next to this billboard that says, false. <laughs> lies. Just lies. Or one of our big arrow. red arrows. <laughs> yes, lies. Um, that's just absurd. Uh, I get it that you think that you're doing news that holds powerful people accountable, but one of the fundamental issues with the old media is they refuse to hold themselves accountable. So they want to hold everybody else accountable. And then God forbid you point out that some reporting they did was missing key facts or was biased or whatever. And they get so up in arms about it. It's like, wait, wait, wait. Your job is to hold everyone else accountable, but you refuse to accept any ounce of criticism yourself. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. It's ridiculous. It is one of the biggest problems. And when you have news outlets that won't acknowledge that they're reporting has fallen short or that they're failing to hold powerful people accountable, those are the news outlets that you absolutely stay away from. (laughs) 